Okay, this is 10.4, which is now the introduction to vectors and the remaining pieces of chapter 10 and two additional sections, all of the rest of the course will just be about vectors. Now you probably won't see vectors in calculus one, um, but they will come back in calculus two and I believe they're used in calculus three as well. So it might be a little while before you see them again, but we definitely want to introduce them so that when you do see them later, um, you're not just learning about them for the first time, which allows your calculus teacher to kind of get into the calculus of it and not necessarily just concentrating on the basics, okay? So I know it's gonna be quite some time between now and the time you'll see them again, but at least if you keep your notes, you know, you have something to refer back to that really goes into some detail about these. And when your calculus instructor goes over it, it should be jogging back some memory, right? Okay, so the first thing we have to do is talk about a vector. And it's so funny that it starts with this first sentence in the book, because if you've seen, oh gosh, what is it called? It's the Minions movie. I forgot what it's called. Um, but the main character in there says his name is Vector and he calls himself Vector because he has both magnitude and direction, right? And so I just every time I see the definition of Vector, I always remember that main character um, in that movie. And I cannot remember, Despicable Me, that's what it was called. So then the Despicable Me part one, the first one, um, Vector is the main um, villain in that in that particular movie. And so he uses that line and he's not wrong. It is <laughs> the definition of a vector. A vector is really a ray that has both magnitude and direction, okay? So it's more just some, an item. It's not just any item, it's actually a ray. And a ray um, is actually going to have a starting point, which we call the initial point. And then it goes in a certain direction toward another point, okay? And so really it is a segment, even though we call it a ray, it looks like a ray because of the arrow, but it doesn't extend beyond this point. And a ray truly does go infin infinitely in that direction, okay? So it's really not a ray, it's a segment goes from one point to another, but in a particular direction, okay? So this particular ray is completely different than if the arrow were pointing toward the point P. That would be a completely different vector. So if I called this vector V, and then I decided to go, here's P, here's Q, and I wanna go in that direction, that's opposite, actually the opposite of V. So it would be the negative direction of V. We'll talk more about that in a little bit so that, so that makes some more sense, okay? Um, but that's really the idea of that's what's going on. So you have like this line or the segment, not a line, because a line goes infinitely many, a line goes arrows on both ends. Array is you start at a point and you go like that forever. What we're talking about now is literally just a segment, but with a direction, okay? So it's three different geometric figures there. This is the one we're talking about, okay? So vectors below are equal only if they have the same magnitude and the same direction. So even though their positions might look like they're in different places, the vectors themselves are equivalent. Because if you notice, this one's going up one, two, three units, one, two, three, four. One, two, three units, one, two, three, four. One, two, three units, one, two, three, four. So the slope, I guess you could say, is the same. And as long as the slope of each of these is the same, which is where the magnitude will come from, um, and the direction is the same. Notice that all of their initial points start here on the bottom left, and then they all point to the, the point that's at the top right. And every single one of those three vectors um, have the same direction. So as long as they have the same direction and the same slope, or eventually we'll talk about the same magnitude, um, then they're all equivalent. It's just a matter of where they're positioned, okay? And so you can take all three of these and you can literally slide it over on top of that one, slide it over on top of that one, 
And if it lines up exactly when you slid it over, they're all equivalent, okay? Now it says vectors are denoted with a bold character or written with an arrow over the top of the letter. For example, in the graph below, the vector is called V. Now, I, when you're writing as a, as a student, when you're writing on your papers, um, you can't really write bold. I mean, you could try, right? Like, like darking it in real dark to try to write a bold letter, but ultimately it's not really a good idea to write um, using bold print when you're writing with your pencil or your pen, okay? It's more common that if we're writing that we use the arrow on top, okay? So in a book or on printed paper, you can use the bold letters and everything stands out, right? But when you're writing, um, you definitely wanna use the notation with the little arrow on top, okay? So every time that I see the bold letters, I know that they're talking about vectors, but if I'm gonna be rewriting something, I'm going to be putting the little arrows on top to let someone know that I'm talking about a vector and not um, just numbers, real numbers, okay? And later we'll talk about what the components of a vector are. And so components don't have arrows on them, only the label for the vector will have the little arrow over it, okay? But again, we'll get into all of that. This is a really long section, so bear with me. Um, <coughs> Excuse me. Luckily, you can like pause and rewatch later if you need to. Um, all that good stuff. So, I'm just going to keep going. So, it says to add vectors V and W, what you do is you draw vector V from an initial point of V and connect it to the terminal point of W. The sum of these two vectors is the vector whose initial point is P and whose terminal point is R, okay? So the, here's an image. What you've gotta do is you know what V looks like, you know what W looks like. Now, what you do is you <coughs> position W so that it starts where V ends, okay? So notice that I have V here, and if I had a, a, a vector W over here, I would have to slide it over so that it starts where the V ends, and it has the same slope and it ends up in the same direction, right? Once I have position W to end where, or I'm sorry, once I have position W to begin where V ends, then what you do is you take a, and you draw a vector from where V begins and where W ends. And when you draw that and it goes in that direction, you have to start with V, the beginning of V, and you have to end with the end of W, right? Because it's V plus W. So you start at this guy's beginning and you end at this guy's end point. <coughs> Excuse me. So once you have that vector there, that is the vector V plus W. And I just went ahead and point this out that V is going from P to Q, W is going from Q to R, and then V plus W should be from P to R, okay? This is just another notation. Now I am talking about a vector, right? So that's why you see when I go from P to Q, I have the little symbol there because that's a vector from P to Q. So it says, here we have the commutative property and <clears throat> it's telling us, it's using an example. So it says Jessica, which is my name. So it's talking about me. No, I don't walk for two, five miles. So it's not talking about me. <laughs> but it says Jessica leaves her home and walks two miles due east and then five miles southwest. Sketch, um, draw a sketch that illustrates this situation, assuming that the direction of Southwest is a 45 degree turn. So I tried my best to draw that. I'll start over. So let's say Jessica starts here. She walks two miles in this direction going straight east, right? And then she turns at a 45 degree angle. So she walked to this point, right? She turns at a 45 degree angle and now she's walking in the direction of Southwest and she's going five miles. So I would assume that this line is gonna be longer than that one. I'm running out of space, so I didn't draw it too far further than that, but that's ultimately what it's going to look like, okay? 
Now, <clears throat> it says, although Jessica has walked seven miles, right? I went two miles this way, and then I went five, or this girl, Jessica, did this, five miles in the other direction. Um, a faster route would be to take the direct route walking the diagonal, which is this, okay? And it says, use a trigonometric law to find the length of this faster route. And so notice that you have side, angle, side, okay? And if I drew that dotted line here that connects them, um, this is the unknown that we're trying to find, okay? And so for side, angle, side triangles, the best thing to use is the law of cosines. So I know that I have the opposite angle here. So then that means x squared is going to equal 2 squared plus 5 squared minus 2 times 2 times 5, and then cosine of 45 degrees. So when I do all of this computation, I find out that x actually equals 3.85 miles. Um, so then now I know the measurement of this. This is going to be 3.85 miles, OK? So it would be a faster route to take from this point to this point, OK? Now it says, what if Jessica left her home and walked five miles southwest, then two miles due east? So notice they reversed the order of the original scenario. They didn't change which direction she walked in. Um, all they did was change the order in which she walked, okay? So it's instead of going around the block this way, she went around the block the other way, okay? And that's what they're trying to demonstrate. So what I did was I drew the original scenario. So here's where Jessica started. She went two miles east, then she turned at a 45 degree angle, and then she went down this direction and ended up in this spot. Now, instead... Let's say she walked five miles southwest and then two miles due east. She still ends up in the same exact spot, okay? So it says, would she arrive in the same location? Yes, we drew the sketch on top of the original sketch to demonstrate that. And then it says, based off of this observation, the vector addition is actually commutative because notice that it doesn't matter whether I go from here to here to here, my addition is going to be from the beginning to the very end, which is there. And so it doesn't matter if I go in this direction and then that direction, it's going to be the very beginning to the very end. So no matter which path I took around the block, I still end up in the same position and I'm still going in the same direction ultimately. Okay. So because of that, they established some identities. So first we know that vector addition is commutative, which means it doesn't matter which order I do the addition in, it'll come out the same. Sometimes it's more convenient to do one than the other. Um, and we have vector addition is also associative. So if you have three vectors, um, there was a typo here, but it's uh, it should be U, V, and W, or V, U, and W. Now, when you have V and then U plus W, you can, instead of associating these two first, you can slide the parentheses over and associate the first two vectors, find that addition, and then add the last one, okay? And it'll come out exactly the same. Again, sometimes it's more convenient to do one first and then the other. So that's the point of having that associative rule. Um, we also have the zero vector. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about what makes a zero vector a zero vector. It literally has no, um, magnitude is also like the length, okay? So it has no length, no magnitude, and it has no direction. So it's basically just like a point, okay? So no length and no um, magnitude. So when you add something that has no length and no magnitude, it doesn't, again, it's associative, so it doesn't matter which order you add something with no length or magnitude. But when you add something with no length or magnitude, you're basically gonna end up in the same spot as V. So um, essentially what's happening is, is if you have, this is the zero vector and this is the V vector. And when you're doing V plus zero, you would have V and where V ends, you would put the zero vector, which would be right on top. Well, that's the same exact thing as V. And the same if you started with the zero vector and then you put V on top of that, it would look like this. But again, it's the same exact thing as V, okay? Okay, 
So it says if V is a vector, then negative V is a vector of the same magnitude. So it'll have the same length, but it has the opposite direction. Now I kind of talked about that on the last page. I did mention that that was gonna happen, right? I said, if I wanted to go, where is it? If I wanted to go in the negative direction, the opposite direction, then it would be called negative V. Now you just have a property that's telling you so. <coughs> Excuse me. And further, if you take one vector, so let's say you start with V, right? Here's V. And then from this point, you do negative V on top. Well, negative V is gonna mean you're gonna go back here. So if you connect this beginning point with the ending point, which is actually the same spot, that's why you get the negative, the zero vector, because it's literally just a point. You moved from one point back to that same point. So it's as if nothing happened, okay? Which is exactly what the zero vector is. It's just a point where nothing's happening. There's no link, there's no direction, it's just there, okay? And so if you go up and then you go back down, I mean, it's the same thing as if you'd have just done nothing, okay? Um, now, this allows us to rewrite the difference of two vectors, w minus, or I'm sorry, v minus w. Instead of writing v minus w, we can write v plus a negative w. So when you're drawing, there's no definition for how to draw v minus w. So what they do is they write it as a sum. And now that you have it as a sum, you can do the subtraction. So if you've got V, let's say V is this, and then let's say W is this. I'm gonna go straight forward, okay? And notice that's a little bit longer than V. So I cannot draw V minus W, but I know that if I'm adding, if this is W, I can do the opposite direction, which is negative W. And then if this is V, all I have to do is put this one where this one ended. So if it ends here, that's where my W begins. And this is negative W. And then now if I go from here to here, I have V plus negative W, which is the same thing as V minus W. So this vector is V minus W. But I couldn't do that. I couldn't draw it unless I had this, um, statement here that allows me to rewrite it as an addition. Okay, now here it has, um, if alpha is a scalar and a scalar is just a real number, okay? So it's not a vector, it's just a number, okay? And let V be a vector, the scalar multiple or alpha times V um, is defined as, I don't know why they have a V and a V, so this guy shouldn't be there. So it says the scalar multiple alpha V is defined as follows. For alpha being positive, the product alpha V is the vector whose magnitude is alpha times the magnitude. So it makes the, the vector, um, either longer or shorter, depending on what alpha is. If it's a number bigger than one, it'll make the vector longer. If it's a, <coughs> excuse me, a number less than one, but still positive, it will make the vector shorter, okay? So it'll have, that will affect the magnitude, but the direction will still be the same, okay? Because the alpha, if it's positive, is not gonna affect the sign of what's happening to the vector. So it'll still be in the same, it won't affect the sign of the slope, okay? Which means it won't affect the sign of the direction, okay? Now, it says if alpha is less than zero, then when you multiply it, yes, it's still gonna affect the magnitude, but you don't really work with the sign. If it's bigger than one, the number by itself without the negative, if it's bigger than one, it'll make it grow. And if it's smaller than one, it'll make it shorter. It doesn't matter what the sign is. The sign affects the direction, okay? So the direction will now be in the opposite direction of V because whatever you have, when you multiply it by a negative, it's gonna completely change the sign, right? So if your slope was positive, meaning going up and to the right, and then you change it to a negative, now it's gonna go, um, 
it's going to go down into the right or down into the right. So then now it's going in a different direction, down into the right. So it'll be going this way, right? Um, actually, if you go up into the right, then you got to go down into the right still. So yeah, it will affect um, not necessarily the slope, but it'll affect the direction. So instead of going up, it'll just be going downward. Now, um, it says if alpha equals zero, or if the V, the vector equals the zero vector, then when you multiply that, it's going to be zero. So it doesn't matter whether that number is zero and the vector is not, it'll still be the zero vector in the end. Or if the number in front is not zero, but the vector itself is the zero vector, then when you multiply this out, it will end up being the zero vector. This will make more sense once we talk about the vectors in their component forms, okay? But right now we're not talking about that just yet. We don't get to it for another couple of pages, I think, one more page, and then we'll talk about its components and then you'll see why this is what it is, okay? So it says, for example, one, based on what is known about multiplying real numbers, complete the following. So if you have a number zero times a vector, any vector, we already know by that rule, the bottom one, that it's gonna be the zero vector. One times the vector means it's not gonna change anything of that vector. It's not gonna change the direction. It's not even gonna change the length. So it's gonna be the same original vector. Now, if you have negative one times V, the one is not going to change the size of the vector, but the negative is going to change the direction of the vector. So it ends up becoming negative v. Now, if I have two numbers that I want to or that I want to um, use, right? So this sum of scalars times a vector can be written as this scalar times a vector plus this scalar times a vector. Okay. Now, same thing here, if I have a scalar and I wanna multiply it by two vectors, I can do the scalar times the vector and then the scalar times the vector. Same thing here, if I have multiplication, we can use um, our associative property of multiplication. And so if I slide the parentheses over, I can actually multiply the um, scalars together first and then multiply that into the vector. Again, all this makes more sense if you know the component definitions. Once you know the component definitions, you can actually prove that these things are true. Okay. Um, so for example, two, it says use the vectors given to draw the following vectors. And it has all three of these things. Now, I tried to draw it on here, you can kind of see some lines that I had, but I didn't have enough room to draw it on there. And so I wanted to um, grab some graphing paper, but I can't find any. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of draw this on here. And I'm just gonna mark this, try to stay within the same like length of these lines. Although it doesn't look like I'm doing that, but just so you could get an idea of what's happening here, okay? So I'm using this axis just so that I can see better. Um, if you want, you can imagine a bunch of little squares, but it's too much for me to draw like a big giant squares all over the place, okay? And I wish I had graphing paper. I used to, but I don't. Let me check real quick. I don't think I have any more. No, I think I used, I think I used all of my graph paper. So, but we can still get the idea across here. So let me grab this and I gotta make sure that I draw these in the same directions, okay? So it doesn't matter where they're located, it doesn't at all. So I'm gonna just draw V over here. So I'm gonna start with a, just gonna start here, just no reason why I'm starting here. But notice that V goes up one, two, and then it goes over one, two, three. So up one, two, and then over one, two, three. And so this is V. It doesn't matter where it is located. I'm gonna scribble all over this paper anyway, okay? Now W, I'm gonna start W over here. 
And notice that W goes down one, two, and then over to the right two. So down two, and then over to the right two. And so this is W. And then U, I'm gonna put it over here, and it's going up three and over one. So up three and over one. So again, my axis is just to help me kind of keep my bearings, but it doesn't matter where I draw these here, okay? And now what it's asking me to do is it's asking me to do A, which is 2V minus W. It's asking me to do B, which is V minus 2W. And then it's asking me to do C, which is V plus 2W minus U, okay? And so I've got to do all three of those on here. I've got to draw them, okay? And so if I draw them, remember, 2V means to take this guy and, and increase the length by two. So you're basically doubling it. So if I went up two and over three to get here, um, and you can start anywhere. I'm going to start here. Instead of starting it over there, I'm going to start it here. So um, I'm going to go up one, two, and then one, two, three, but twice. One, two, one, two, three, and then one, two, one, two, three. And so this is actually 2V, okay? It's in the same direction, notice they're parallel, but it's twice as long, okay? Then from this terminal point where I stop, I have to do negative W, because remember, this is the same as plus negative W. Well, what the heck does negative W look like, right? If W is going in this direction, all it means is that negative W would be the same thing. So start here, and this goes down one, two, and over two. One, two, and over two. So instead of going downward, I would be going upward. And this would be negative W, okay? So notice where the arrow is. Now, I've got to take this dub negative W and shift it so that it ends where V or begins where V ends. So then that means I need to go up to and then back to. So from here, my goodness, this pencil, up to and then back to. And so this in that direction is negative W. And then how do you add the two, the two V and the negative W? You connect from the very, very beginning of two V all the way to the end of negative W. And this right here is the answer, 2V minus W. It's this, but remember, this is equivalent to that, okay? Now, let's go ahead and work with B. And does it matter where you put this? I just have this for my bearings, okay? Could have drawn it in thin air as long as I had the same kind of slopes and the appropriate slopes. Now, V, here I've got V. Now what we wanna do is we want to add negative two W. Well, what the heck is negative two W gonna look like, right? So I'm gonna draw it over here somewhere just so that it's out of the way. So let's see, I'm gonna start here at two and this number there. So it means twice the length of this, but in the opposite direction. Also oh, starting up here is not the right because the negative W is over here and I gotta double this guy's length. So maybe I should start down here. And so negative W, I've got to go up two and backwards two, but twice. So up two and then backwards two, and then up two and then backwards two. So this is actually negative two W. It's going in the opposite direction as W, notice they're parallel, but it's twice the length of W, okay? So that's negative 2w. And then I need to take v and I need to, where v ends, I need to place this vector on top. So it's gonna overlap this one, but it's okay. It's not really that big of a deal. So I have to go up one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. So from where v ends, I'm gonna go up one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four and I go in that direction. So this length here is negative two W. 
Now, how do you add? You start with the initial point of V and you end at the terminal point of this. So then I have this um, vector here, which is V minus two W. Okay, I wrote it along the length, but it's V the vector minus two W. Okay. Now for the last one. So we're going to have V, then we're going to add to W, and then we're going to do minus um, U, okay? So um, I don't know where I'm going to put this, but maybe we'll try to put it down here, okay? So if this is W, then I go down to and over two. If I repeat that down to and over two, then the entire thing this whole thing is 2w. It's twice the length of w, but in the same direction as w, okay? So I'm gonna have to have my vector v, and then this is gonna have to go that way, and then from there, I'm gonna put u over here. So I'm actually just gonna, I think I'm gonna start in here somewhere so I can have room to do all that, okay? So I'm gonna start with uh, down here. I'm gonna put the point here, okay? And then I need to move in the direction as V. So I need to go up two and then over three. So up two and then over one, two, three. So this is V, okay? Then from there, I need to do the two W. So I need to draw this. So I can start there, but I need to go down one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four to the right. So one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four. So I actually end up right there. So that is two W. Then I need to add U. So there's U. So it goes up one, two, three, and over one. So from here, I'm gonna go up one, two, three, and over one. And this is U. Now, how do you get the final, final answer? You have to start at your very first initial point and end at your very last terminal point. So from here to here is going to be the answer, which is V plus two W plus U. Kind of look almost like a W, but it is a U, okay? So this is the final addition there. Okay, from there to there. So now you have all three, right? Um, examples of how you would draw these additions. So in the computer, it's gonna have you do this, but it's not gonna make you draw them. It's more of gonna make you select them from a multiple choice, okay? So you will see a bunch of different images and you gotta be able to identify which one is this, which one is that, which one is this, okay? And let's continue with this page. So on this page, we go over some more properties about the magnitudes, okay? So the symbol for magnitude is, it looks like an absolute value bar, but it's like doubled. So there's like two bars on the left and two bars on the right, okay? And the um, magnitude is always going to be a positive number, always, 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 because length is positive, okay? So your magnitude is a length, and that magnitude will always be a positive number. Now, if your vector has to be negative, that affects the direction, not necessarily the length, okay? So your vector can, the length of it can equal zero, but that only happens if you're talking about the zero vector, okay? So the magnitude of a vector equals zero only if the vector is the zero vector and vice versa. If the vector is the zero vector, then you know its magnitude will be zero. It's just the point. A point doesn't have any length, okay? A point is a lengthless and widthless location, okay? What's funny in mathematics is there's really no formal, um, like, proven definition of a point. That's something that we just go based off of that tiny little definition of it's just a location indicator. 
Um, but really, since everything bases off of points, you really would think that they would have a more um, substantial definition, like something that's immersed in mathematics and has been proven. Um, but there really isn't. It's very interesting. Anyway, going off in my little mathematical mind. Um, so even if you're taking the magnitude of a negative vector, it's going to have the same exact length as the original vector. So remember, these two vectors should have the same length. The only thing that should be different is their um, direction. Okay, so that's why it's saying the magnitude of V is going to be the same as the magnitude of negative V because the only difference between those two vectors is the direction. If you go to from point A to point B or from point B to point A, that length is still going to be the same. Okay. Also, if you have a multiplier, okay, so let's say you like in this previous example, we were multiplying by twos, right? Um, whether you take the magnitude of the multiplier or you take the magnitude of the original and then you just multiply it by that, um, the positive version of that uh, real number, that scalar, it's going to come out the same. Okay, so it's just a matter of do you take the magnitude of W and then double it or do you find W to W and then take the magnitude of that and it's still going to be the same, the same length. Okay, so another one we have, another definition we have is that um, normally when they, sometimes they just use the letter U but a lot of times when they use the letter U for the vector, they're talking about what's called a unit vector. And a unit vector is a vector that has the magnitude of one. So its length is literally one unit. So like drawing on this boxes up here, from one box to one box, that would be U, okay? You could also have it in another direction, right? You could have it from here to here even though it's in a different direction, it's still you. I could have drawn it from here to here. And that's still a unit vector. Or I could have drawn it from here to here. No, I already did that down there. What other direction am I missing? So I went from bottom to top. I'm missing this direction. So if I go in that direction, that's also a unit vector. So it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter at all. I could go up, right? I could go down. These are all unit vectors. I could go to the right um, or I could go to the left. Every single one of these things in all of those directions is a unit vector. And it doesn't even need to be like a 45 degree angle. It could be some other angle just so long as the vector is of the same length. It just might stick up a little bit because it's not the 45 degree angle. So as long as it still has the same length of one unit, it is still a unit vector, okay? I just don't want you to think that they're all gonna be like 45 degree angles or straight or straight up and down. It could be at any angle, as long as the length of that vector is just one unit, okay? So let me go there. Where's the rest of my papers? Here we go. So now we get to talk about um, components, okay? And so before we can talk about components, my goodness, we're not even a third of the way through this lecture. It's crazy. Um, I may need to break it up. How many? Yeah, this is already 40 minutes. So I'm going to stop it here and then I'll continue with the position vectors in the second video.